The Alpha Female. A tale of power and survival in the animal kingdom. The hyenas moved in quickly, their sharp teeth bared as they pounced on their target. The Queen Mother, leader of the clan, had been caught off guard, as she lay feasting on the fresh flesh from the day's hunt. The attack was over in a matter of moments, leaving the once powerful Queen Mother defeated and at the mercy of her own subjects. To understand the events that led up to this dramatic moment, we must go back to the beginning. Deep within the vast savanna, nestled amidst the golden grass and towering acacia trees, lay a hidden world that few outsiders ever saw. It was a world of fierce predators and cunning prey, where the daily struggle for survival never ended. And it was within this world that Nuru the hyena called home. Nuru's ribs protruded from his thin frame, his once sleek coat now dull and patchy. His amber eyes were sunken with hunger, and he licked his dry lips as he scanned the savanna for any sign of prey. Within the clan, there was a strict hierarchy that determined each member's place and status. At the top of the hierarchy was the alpha female and her offspring, who dominated all others and control access to food and resources. Beneath them were the beta females and males, who held lesser but still important roles in the clan. At the bottom of the hierarchy were the lower-ranked males and females, who fought for every scrap of food, and often served as the first line of defense against predators. Despite this harsh and unforgiving world, Nuru was a survivor. He had learned to navigate the intricate social dynamics of the clan, and to adapt to the ever-shifting conditions of the savanna. As the sun began to set on the savanna, a group of hyenas led by the alpha female spotted a herd of gazelles grazing in a nearby clearing. With a series of yips and growls, the hyenas sprang into action, racing across the grasslands towards their prey. Nuru ran at the head of the pack, his legs pumping as he closed in on the gazelles. He could hear the frantic beating of their hoofs, and the panicked bleeding of the young as the hyenas closed in for the kill. Beside him, his trusted friend Sefi kept pace, his sharp eyes scanning the herd for any sign of weakness or vulnerability. As they closed in on the gazelles, the hyenas split into smaller groups, each focusing on a different target. Nuru and Sefi singled out a young gazelle, its long legs pumping as it tried to outrun its pursuers. For a few moments, it seemed as though the gazelle might escape. But then Nuru lunged forward, sinking his teeth into the animal's hindquarters, and bringing it crashing to the ground. As the other hyenas closed in, Nuru and Sefi backed away, knowing that the alpha female and her offspring would soon claim the spoils of their hard-won hunt. For Nuru and the other lower-ranked members of the clan, this was a familiar routine. They would hunt and surrender their food to the queen mother and her family, knowing that they would receive only the scraps and leftovers in return. It was a sad and unfair system, but one that had been in place for generations. Nuru and Sefi crept away from the rest of the clan, their stomachs growling with hunger. Nuru let out a low growl of frustration as they slunk through the grass. Another hunt, another meal surrendered to the queen mother, he muttered. When will we get our fair share? Sefi shook his head. It's the way of our clan, Nuru. We must follow the alpha female and her offspring. That's how it's always been. But it's not fair, Nuru protested. We work just as hard as the others. We deserve more than scraps and bones. Sefi nodded in agreement. I know, my friend. But what can we do? Nuru's eyes gleamed in the moonlight as he spoke. We can do an unsanctioned hunt. Just a small animal, something we can quickly devour. Sefi hesitated. But if we're caught. I know the risks, Nuru interrupted. But we're hungry, Sefi. We need to eat. Sefi sighed, knowing that Nuru was right. All right. But we must be careful. We can't let the others know. With that, the two hyenas crept through the night, their eyes scanning the savanna for any sign of prey. They moved silently, their movements fluid and graceful as they searched for a small animal to hunt. Finally, they spotted a small hare, nibbling on some grass at the edge of a clearing. With a series of yips and growls, they sprang into action, racing towards their prey. Within moments, the hare was caught and dispatched, its small body quickly devoured by the two hungry hyenas. As they licked their chops and looked out at the savanna, Nuru and Sefi knew that they had taken a risk, but it was one they had to take. In a world where survival was never guaranteed, sometimes you had to take matters into your own paws. The next few weeks were eventful for Nuru and Sefi. They continued to take part in the clan's hunts, but they would scoff at the scraps they were given, and pass them on to hungrier hyenas. Their behavior didn't go unnoticed, 
and the queen mother soon grew suspicious of the two hyenas. She had noticed that they were getting fleshier by the week, and if one didn't know their station, they would have thought they were top-ranking members of the clan. During a clan meeting, she spoke up. I have noticed that Nuru and Sefi have been getting healthier while the rest of us are growing leaner. What is the meaning of this? Nuru and Sefi exchanged worried glances. They knew that the queen mother was ruthless and ruled with an iron fist. She would not tolerate any deviation from the established order. But before they could say anything, the queen mother continued. If I discover that you have been hunting on your own and keeping the spoils for yourselves, the punishment will be severe. Nuru and Sefi bowed their heads, trying to hide their fear. They knew that the queen mother was not to be trifled with. Nuru and Sefi retreated to the outskirts of the clan's territory, their heads hanging low. They both knew they had made a mistake, but they also knew that they couldn't go back to being hungry. We have to do something, Nuru said, his voice low and urgent. We can't keep living like this, scraping by on scraps. We deserve better. Sefi nodded in agreement. But what can we do? The Queen Mother is too powerful. We can't just overthrow her. Nuru's eyes gleamed with a newfound determination. There are others in the clan who are just as unhappy as we are. We can gather them together, form a group, and take down the Queen Mother. Sefi looked skeptical. And what if we fail? What if she catches us? Nuru's voice was steady. We won't fail. And even if we do, it's better to try than to live like this forever. Are you with me? Sefi looked at his friend, his heart pounding with fear and excitement. He knew that the road ahead would be dangerous and uncertain, but he also knew that he couldn't go back to being hungry. I'm with you, he said, his voice firm. Nuru smiled, a fierce glint in his eyes. Good. Let's get started. Nuru and Sefi went from one hyena to the next, quietly explaining their plan and inviting them to a secret meeting place later that night. They stressed the importance of keeping the gathering a secret, and urged each hyena to come alone, without telling anyone else. As the night fell and the moon rose high in the sky, the hyenas began to gather in the designated meeting place. The tension in the air was palpable as they murmured among themselves, wondering what this could be about. They were all there, the hunters, the scavengers, even some of the cubs. They all waited for Nuru to speak. When Nuru stood up and began to speak, the murmuring died down and all eyes turned to him. He spoke passionately about their current situation, how they were constantly hungry and fighting for scraps while the Queen Mother lived in luxury. He recounted their struggles, and the unfairness of their situation. He talked about how they had all suffered, and how they had all been denied their rightful share of the food. The murmurs grew louder. And I have a solution, Nuru declared, his voice ringing out over the clearing. We must, overthrow the Queen Mother. The hyenas gasped, and there was a sudden silence as they all took in what Nuru had said. Nobody had ever dared to challenge the Queen Mother before, and the very idea of it was both thrilling and terrifying. Nuru continued, his voice growing stronger with each passing moment. He talked about the plan, the strategy, the risks. He spoke of the glory that would await them if they succeeded, and the consequences if they failed. At the end of his speech, Nuru looked around at the faces of the hyenas, searching for any sign of doubt or fear. But there was none. They all looked back at him with fierce determination, ready to fight for their freedom and their right to food. The tension in the air was electric, and for a moment, nobody spoke. Then, slowly, one hyena stood up, then another, and another. Soon, the entire clearing was filled with the sound of their growls and snarls of defiance. They were ready to take on the Queen Mother, and nothing could stop them now. One of the hyenas spoke up, but how can we attack the Queen Mother? She's heavily guarded and we lower ranks have no access to her. Nuru paused for a moment, thinking. The only time we lower ranks have access to her is after the hunt, he said slowly. We're all gathered away from the den, and she's more vulnerable out in the plains. We attack her there. There was a murmur of agreement from the gathered hyenas, and someone spoke up, but what about her guards? Won't they try to protect her? Nuru's eyes narrowed as he thought. Once we've overpowered the Queen Mother, they won't dare fight us. They're also disgruntled, and won't risk their lives for her. The hyenas nodded, and Nuru could see the determination in their eyes. They were all in this together, and they would do whatever it took to overthrow the Queen Mother and claim their rightful place in the clan. As they dispersed, Nuru and Sefi looked at each other, 
a sense of excitement and fear coursing through their bodies. They knew that the coming days would be dangerous and uncertain, but they were ready to face whatever lay ahead. As the hunt began, the lower ranks were more determined than ever to catch something big. They looked at each other with fierce determination, silently promising to make this work. The Queen Mother gave her usual passionate speech, emphasizing the importance of teamwork and obedience to the clan's rules and hierarchy. The tension during the hunt was palpable. Nuru and Sefi led the pack, their eyes scanning the savanna for any sign of prey. They moved in silence, not wanting to give away their position to any potential target. The group moved swiftly, with an almost synchronized grace, not wanting to miss any opportunity that could present itself. As they moved deeper into the savanna, the sound of rustling leaves and the occasional animal call filled the air. The hyenas were on high alert, their instincts kicking in as they searched for any signs of their prey. The group split into two, with Nuru and Sefi leading one group and the other hyenas following. The tension continued to mount, as the hyenas moved stealthily through the brush. Suddenly, a herd of gazelles came into view. They were a massive group, grazing on the grass, completely unaware of the predators stalking them. Nuru and Sefi led the charge, their eyes locked onto the biggest and strongest gazelle in the group. They moved quickly, their instincts and training taking over. The other hyenas followed suit, surrounding the herd and isolating the chosen prey. The chase was on, the hyenas in full pursuit of their prey. The gazelle was fast, but the hyenas were relentless. They chased it through the savanna, their hunger driving them forward. Finally, after what seemed like an eternity, the gazelle stumbled, and the hyenas pounced. The atmosphere was tense as the queen mother made her way towards the dead gazelle. The hyenas' eyes were fixed on her, waiting for the right moment to strike. Nuru's heart was pounding in his chest, his paws sweating with anticipation. He glanced at Sefi, who nodded in agreement, and they both knew that this was their chance to take back control of their lives. The queen mother approached the gazelle and looked around, nodding in approval at the hunter's success. She then started to devour the meat, her back turned towards the rest of the clan. This was the moment the hyenas had been waiting for. They charged forward, teeth bared and claws ready, and before the queen mother could react, they were upon her. The attack was brutal and swift, with the hyenas overpowering the queen mother before her guards could even make a move. The once powerful queen was now lying on the ground, defeated and vulnerable. The rest of the clan looked on in shock and confusion, unsure of what was happening. The hyenas stood over their former leader, their victory clear in their eyes. Nuru addressed the clan, his voice ringing with authority. We are no longer going to starve. We will all have an equal share from now on. No more hierarchy, no more unfairness. The clan cheered in agreement, and Nuru and Sefi were lifted onto the shoulders of their fellow hyenas in celebration. The Queen Mother was left barely alive, and banished from the clan to fend for herself. As the days passed, the hyenas worked together to hunt and gather food, and for the first time in a long time, no one went hungry. The clan thrived under their new system of fairness and equality. And that, my dear viewer, is the story of Nuru and the hyena clan. As we conclude this story, we can ask ourselves, what lessons can we learn from Nuru and his clan? How can we apply them to our own lives, and how can we use them to make a positive difference in the world around us? We hope this story has sparked your imagination, and inspired you to think deeper about the world we live in. If you enjoyed it, please like, share, and subscribe to the Tales of the Savannah for more thought-provoking content. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you again soon, in the Savannah.